just called that other girl a hoe. I didn't go a hoe. Welcome back to the Tastefully Weird. Welcome back to the Tastefully Weird podcast, guys. I'm Ellie. Ellie, you're so not so. This is Silvana. This is Christina. Sorry about my voice, though. This is Joan. Joan Marie. Wait, don't. Nope, don't do that. Okay, this is Joan again. This is Joan. Hi. How's everyone doing? Hey. Great. Okay, fantastic. Cheers. Stupendous. Voila. Stupid. Are we French all of a sudden? Uh, me. So, pretty much everyone's on a dating app right now. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually on the dating app. Oh my god, well they just were on a freaking dating app. No, I'm not gonna lie, I was. Silvana is not on a dating app, so don't try to find me on there, guys. Because I'm not on there. I'm gonna find you. <laughs> I'm on um, interpals.net, which is... I've been on there since 2008. <laughs> she's uh, She's been watching me go through... Ooh! Going through what? Are you also on the dating app, Ellie? <laughs> yeah. I'm oh. having fun trolling people mostly. Wait, what do you have to do? What do you have to do? What? What do you have to Uh, this Tinder. one is Tinder. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I'm opening up my Nobody Tinder. Nobody knows yeah. your real name. No. And, uh, I'm now on Bumble. And there's just as gross of dudes on here, too. So, that's nice. Oh, man. None of them stand a chance. You're the man of my dreams. My passion is fitness and health. I work two jobs. And I'm all about the hustle. Keep on hustling. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so be- before we get started, before we get started on, uh, before we get started on, you know, the rest of the podcast, let's, uh, let's do a little quick plug a plug, plug it, plug, 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 take it away, Christina. To check us out, go on to our Facebook page, which is Tastefully Weird. We have a Twitter, which is Tastefully at Tastefully Weird. We have an Instagram that is Tastefully Weird. Follow us on Snapchat at Tastefully Weird. Follow us on all social media because we are excited to talk to you just as you're excited to talk to us. Not on dating apps because we're not on dating apps. We're, yeah, we're, not we're certainly not on dating, dating apps. apps as Taste for the Weird. <laughs> nope, there is no Taste for the Weird on dating apps. But you can also follow us on YouTube and watch our hilarious videos. And you can send us questions at Ask Tastefully. No. No? No. Um, to ask us questions or ask for ask, advice or ask for advice mm-hmm. you on, use our handle on twitter hashtag ask tastefully at tastefully weird and if you want advice you send your questions and advice to tastefully weird at gmail ask tastefully at gmail.com all right i'm excited because i just learned all those things <laughs> <laughs> so yeah Ellie was hovering over me like a mad I'm over, doggy. I'm on the other side of the table. There was no she hovering. She was staring at me. She was staring me down. There was no hovering? Oh, my. It was the scariest moment of my life. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what was the scariest moment of my life? You staring at me right now? No. You asking me to do it? No. <laughs> you asking Christina to do it? <laughs> Or Silvana writing it on paper before No, the I fact that Silvana is probably drawing somebody pooping again. That'd be amazing. It's not pooping. That. It looks like a devil from over here. Oh, it's definitely big old lips. It's definitely somebody gonna be pooping. Chong give it his lips. Man. Um, but no, the scariest moment lips. of my life was uh, waiting for the new Rogue One trailer that premiered on the Olympics. Ooh. And it was scary because I wasn't expecting what i saw at the end at the end at the end at the end oh no i saw that no. i had seen that in the the leaked trailer um from back in the from back in the uh, the star wars celebration to the 2016s <laughs> um but yeah so what did you guys think of the new trailer it, it got me a little bit more excited because for the first one, I didn't initially think it was that big of a deal, honestly. So this one, I was like, oh, I'm interested. And, of course, that little reveal 
Well, the first one had the reveal. No, this no, one no, didn't no, reveal. No, the second one. Yeah, so I was like, oh, dope. So now I'm definitely going to watch it. Before I was like, uh, it's like Star Trek to me or something like that. Like, I'm not really super interested in watching the movie, but, um, so this one I am, so, because it connects, doesn't it? Right? Yeah, it, yeah. it's a prequel to so the fourth sorry. one. Let's do it! Sorry. My bad. What were you, what did you say? I said, I second what Sil said. Does anybody know how to draw, like, hands and feet? Uh, no. We're not drawers here, I'm sorry. Um, drawers? You mean drawers? Like artists? Or like a, you know... No, sketch. John, I'm not sticking my middle finger up at you. No. No, because I don't see your hand in my fucking face. <laughs> You're so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck what? Um, as far as the new Rogue One trailer goes, um, I'm really excited to actually go watch it. I wasn't sure if I was going to love... Um, Jin Percy Jones. Yeah, but her name in the movie is Jin Urso. Thank you. And uh, I'm actually really excited to watch the whole thing and fall in love with her because I'm sure I'm going to. Um, I saw the new trailer. It makes me really excited because I like this director a whole lot. However, Who's, who is it that d- that's directing it? Um, this week, John. Lord, his name is at the tip of my tongue. But he directed, um, he directed monsters. Oh, Gareth, Gareth Head Headlam. I don't know. No, that's an actor. Oh my God. James Earl Jones. Um, Ellie's still mad at me because I erased all her notes from her notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she, she can just give me like I had notes on uh, what we were gonna talk about and people's names and things and. I erased them. Joan fucking erased everything. So I'm now I have to go and Google everything. You didn't have his name written down. <laughs> yeah, I did. No, yeah, you I did. Didn't. Um, it says bees. No, you didn't. All it says here is Suicide Squad. Be in piggy. Wow. Star Wars and no man's. Game. Yeah, it was. It's Garrett. Garrett. Gareth Edwards, and he was the director of Godzilla and Monsters. I don't know Ooh, if you guys saw that. Oh, Godzilla sucked. Godzilla sucked because at the end of like his cut, they made him add these fucking people into it. Mm. And uh, from what I'm understanding, they had reshoots for Rogue One, which, mm. <clears throat> right, since the first trailer came out, they've had reshoots. So oh, no. I was a little apprehensive seeing it, but I was I liked it. But I did notice some differences between the first trailer and the second trailer. And that is, like, the shots that they showed from the first trailer, they cleaned it up. Mm. Like, there's a couple, there's one scene in particular where people are pointing it out, but um, it's the rebel pilots are imprisoned and they have blood and, like, crap all over their face and they're beaten up because it's a war. Yeah. Um, And in the new trailer, it's cleaned up. There's nothing on their face. There's no blood. They digitally remove the blood. Why would you remove the blood, though? Because of, I, from what I'm understanding, from what it looks like, is that Disney saw it and was like, this is too warlike. These needs to be more for children. So they cleaned it up. So I feel mm-hmm. bad because we're never going to see the... Just like that. We're never going to see the good trailer. But it's... it's a, I mean, the good movie, the good version of the movie. But we're in the middle of a war... When it's the movie said in the middle of a war, why would you clean out blood? Because it's Star when Wars. When you've been fighting, no, it's Disney. A war. Because it's Star Wars. Disney's a no, movie. and fucking George Lucas too. That makes no sense. It literally. Oh my God! Who is oh, that? We have a special oh guest. Oh my God! What if it's a murderer? Yeah, we're back. Uh, uh, Flady has shown up. Stole your money. No, no, I, I. He's I brought uh, beverages for us to partake. Yeah, we're mm-hmm. recording right now? Yeah. I just walked in with alcohol. It's not alcohol. It's beverages. I, I beverages. said no. Why can't we say alcohol? I'm confused. I don't know what to say. Oh, God. <laughs> you drunk in every podcast. Politically <laughs> correct belief. I'm trying not to make us drunk in every fucking thing we're that we do. We're drunk all the time. <laughs> Guys, we drink, but, like, not excessively, just normally. I drink excessively. Yeah, just, like. Uh, Zendaya. Like once. Zendaya? <laughs> a week. Who's, where's Zendaya? Zendaya! Where is she? Where'd you see her? Here's the 
something I've been I've been seeing all over the internet lately. Like, um, everybody is kind of talking about the bodies of the athletes, and everybody's like, "Oh, why do you have to judge the athletes and like talk about their their asses and like all that?" But the thing is, like, I get it. It's it's more because of social media. It's like everywhere now. But the thing is. You don't see that body every day. I think you're allowed to talk about a body that you don't see every day. You're like, damn, that's like, it's like a- extraordinary to see something like that. I'm sorry. I feel like I can fucking judge, not judge, but like, talk you know, just uh, appreciate. Appreciate. Yeah. And, you know. I agree. I, don't I mean, know. I don't, I don't think wrong. that people, I mean, I haven't been talking about their bodies in a negative way, in a sexualized way. None of that. Like, I look at it and I'm like, damn, girl, you go, girl. Like look at th- like their bo- like their butts not their boobs their butts are so tight and pretty and firm I'm like man I I want a butt like that that's a nice butt you go girl exactly but they're like oh in every sport like everybody has a different body and some yeah people because choose they're looking body. for specific parts of their body <laughs> yeah like what that, body that you and want. you're also building your body specifically to the sport a gymnast is not built like a swimmer a swimmer is not built like a cyclist exactly. there's there are differences in the muscle. That you build and, and the way you build it. Yeah, it's like they work on different. all their like they work on their whole body to build their stamina to build their core, but their parts of their bodies are gonna be more stronger and more like defined than others based on their sport. But what were you what were you seeing on social media? Was it more like negative things For about females. people talking about it or yeah, well, like oh it's ma- it's like why are people only focusing on their bodies? Why aren't people focusing on like the have, sport and like how like, have they, they seen are. social media everyone's talking about the dude swimmers no it's but so ju- like for instance no one in this world cares about men's beach volleyball versus <laughs> women's beach volleyball no 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 there could be eye candy obviously okay but tell me about the ratings between men's beach volleyball and women's beach volleyball well, why do you watch women's beach beach volleyball? Well, Walsh Jenny is like the most amazing. They are intense. Players. All that heat, they have to. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even get yeah, through the fucking sentence. Like, no, okay. <laughs> the way they handle them balls. Okay, but that's like the the women's soccer team. Yeah. They have a even our women who are out of the finals and the quarterfinals and. Broke my heart. Yeah, they lost the quarterfinals. Um, which is the first ever since, um, or before two thousands actually, that they didn't even compete in the later game. Well, what? Of but the they tournament. have they have a they have a higher um, ratings in views than the men, like without a doubt. Well, because one, they're better. <laughs> they're better than the men, and it's they're also a lot hotter. Well, like for <laughs> oh, gymnastics. No. no, no, I can tell you why I watch women's soccer. And you, do you they're see how fucking badass? They're yeah. brutal. They, they are. They will get girl, kicked in the face and get the there fuck was back a girl up with a broken nose yeah. in the last World Cup, yeah. and she got up and fucking kept playing. Yeah. What? Yep. That doesn't happen to the, dudes. The dudes. That's the that's dudes actually, get tapped. Technically, what you just said actually did happen to us last World Cup, and Clint Dempsey got hit in the nose, bled, and still played. What about that Simone Jones. Biles though? Simone Biles, she. Is so amazing. She's a genius at what she does. But she didn't get gold last night. It doesn't matter. No. She is not. It doesn't Just matter. Kidding. No, I know. She's still like pretty bad at I mean, not it? still. Hey, she Lori is. Got and, the gold, didn't she? and she was modest. Lori didn't you know, get gold. She what? got silver. No, she got silver. Who uh, got gold? The, some girl. Some the n- a Netherlands girl. She was dope, mm. though. Yeah, she had the most. Well, unique. it was on beam? Yeah. It was on beam. She had a very unique um, routine. What did Simone get? Sorry. Simone actually she got, she got she bronze. Fell, almost fell. Yeah, and she actually modestly came out and said that the Brazilian should have got her place instead. Like she shouldn't even deserve the amount. But um, but either way, like it was still a heck of. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed a the tournament. female one more. I'm gonna say because they the acrobatics are just more evident, and the the other one, like for men, the other one. The men's one is just not as good. That is, it's it's because what you see is incredible. From the women's per, like the women's side of gymnastics, requires a lot of skill balance, which is something you cannot like. The balance beam and the uneven bar, all that coordination is in like it's insane. The amount you have to take care of, versus the men. The men is what you get from balance is what the pommel horse, which you. It's all like upper body strength, 
And same with, with the rings. I mean, what you get out of it is just like... It's not as entertaining to watch. Right, because, I mean, it does require a lot of strength. Do they wear but, cups? Uh, for gymnastics, not really, no. No? No. Cups... I want to tell you something about cups. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of dick stories, like like getting in the way of, of gold, because like... Dick's getting dick, away from I'm gold? Sorry, what? <laughs> Yeah, because like they're, they're people's dicks, they're so floppy, so they they'll get like you know they'll make them lose floppy an event yeah, because they'll get in the way. Their dicks are so floppy that it gets in the way, or too hard in some cases. I mean, that pole vaulter was fucking hard and floppy and like all over the place. You can't like no that pole tuck that. Was, was he was he was hard. he was flaccid. Mm-hmm. He was flaccid. That's why I hit the pole. Yeah, he was flaccid. No, the one that you sent us. That no. was like a wrestler. That was a wrestler. That was a wrestler. A dude in a, in fucking tights. Hey, now. <laughs> no, the lesbian does not look at them sexually. Savannah. No, no, no. You're gay. I'm saying. Uh, wait, what? No. Wait, what? This, What's no, happening who? right now? Who? No, it's what? discrimination. It's, it's against what? Against men. Right now. How is the discrimination against men? Put your junk away. Tuck it. Don't let it get in so the way of you. So, was about to explain something about cups. So let's yeah, listen please. to what he has to say. There's B cups. There's D cups. There's C cups. And seriously? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you gotta put them away, ladies. Talking about ladies. Oh. <laughs> How did you not catch that? I did, but I'm sorry. I've only ever seen one cup in my life, and it was my brother's. You know, my my brother. For I'm his talking first about boobs, though. We I was talking that. about yeah. For my brother's first day of baseball, oh, my sorry. my dad they didn't have cups in Nicaragua, so they're like, oh, bring a cup. So my dad my my dad's like, okay, that's what you gotta bring your own cup. cup. So they brought their own cup, and then the the, <laughs> the little league coach was like, no, like you know. Wasn't the one that you put on your underwear or whatever? <laughs> he literally brought a. Cu- oh my god! And they put their his name on it. Dude, your dad is my hero. You changed your hair. Yeah. That's, oh, that's awesome. Joan is the queen Don't of lie. changing her Don't hair. Lie. No, it's shockingly awesome. It's shockingly awesome. Yeah. So you don't like it. Can we no. put a picture of Joan's How hair on our sense, social media? Does it say that don't yeah, like we'll it. do it. I'm saying it surprised me the most. Okay. If you want I'm to the see queen it, of changing my hair, yeah. I've had my hair pink. I had my hair green. I had my hair purple. I had my hair yellow. blue. I had it gray. I had it yellow. Well, you're I have a brown hair, you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Love you. Calm down, you can see my na- this is my natural hair color. Yes, and it's very light. No, it's like strawberry brown. Yeah. Like, what is it? That exists? No. Get it. It's the bus what? time. Ellie, read the advice. What? From Let's have a little. Wait, wait, let me have a little wrap. What? Hold on, let me have Vegan a little. Vegan cupcakes. <laughs> let me have a little wrap for this. Check it. Check it. Check it. So, I need some advice. I ain't gotta ask twice. What you got for me? What's my vice? Give me some advice. <laughs> Boom. Boom. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was amazing. Can you please put that in the front of every advice now? Yes. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> you're well, you're well. No, that was a work so of if, art. If you want to send us questions for to get, to get advice from us. <laughs> Go Say ahead and eat. <laughs> I don't remember. Teach me how to rap. Go ahead and uh, <laughs> email us at uh, uh, ask weird. no ask. Oops. <laughs> email us at ask ask tastefully, tastefully at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. How cute. And then uh, hey. we'll answer some shit. So we got gooch cheese. We got a freaking advice what? for you. <laughs> so no, we don't. We go, <laughs> go to the doctor, please. <laughs> We got we got a few, but again, people sent us uh, some stuff that was incomplete that we can't really answer. So I've emailed them back and let them know to email me. Beth, it was like I'm having problems. Help me. Oh, <laughs> it's like well, what problems do you have? Listen, if you got problems, solve them. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's like I, I need to know what problem it is. 
so I can help you solve it. So, um, yeah, so I've emailed these people back, but I have a few, some are from Reddit. One of this is what, uh, one that we actually got. So, Savannah, do you want to read this one? Okay. <clears throat> Everybody else, shut, shut this your is, mouth, because this, this, this is real. This is surreal. Okay? This is by somebody who asks us a question. Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Lana, you're very deep today. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Why do I get disgusted slash apathetic when someone develops feelings for me? I'll sometimes meet someone and start to like them a little then when it becomes apparent they like me back i get disgusted either that or i'll just i just don't care and lose all interest sometimes i alternate between disgust and apathy i don't want to be near the person i often just end up vanishing from their lives i wish i wasn't like this i don't understand it because i think i'm generally a good person i sincerely like helping people and want the best for them and i don't hate people at all Sometimes I'll even lose interest in friends for brief periods of time and I just want to be completely alone. Why am I like this and how can I fix it? You are experiencing normal feelings when you say that you like somebody and then they like you back and then you'll start to lose interest. But you're just being damn picky, all right? I get it. I do it sometimes too. But I um I also experience those type of things that like I'll like somebody and then the moment that they show interest in me, I'm like, no, and I run away and I don't want to talk to them or see them or I have anything to do with them. I don't know why, but it's just like a weird thing. I mean, it doesn't happen with everybody. I mean, the ones that I really, really like, if they like me back, I'm going to be like, yes. But um, I think that when we're, when she deviates to the, it happens with her friends that she doesn't want to mm -hmm. be with her friends, that's where it's kind of troublesome. Yeah. Self-esteem issues, I Maybe think. she's just an ex like she's super introvert. She's mm -hmm. very. She seems like she's really introvert. But, but you don't withdraw from the people that you're closest with as an introvert. No. The people that you're closest with, you try to are the keep ones them, you and energy. you only have small group of friends. Yeah. They're they're the ones that give you energy. You still have to retreat to your fucking room. Like I wouldn't say women, I get, but like I don't get disgusted when somebody likes me and that like back. I mean, when I like somebody that likes me back, I don't get disgusted. Like. What I what happens with me is sometimes I'll like find flaws with them that I didn't see before, and I'm like, wait, do I even really like this person at all? I don't know why I think it's just like human nature to just kind of be like, oh, you got it, like, you you already got the prize, like you don't. There's it's a thrill of the chase that you like basically, mm -hmm. but the friends thing is weird. I think that you need to you need to address that. I just don't. I I, I um I. That was a hard one for me. I mean, I need we I need a little more information on your friends part. Like, do you truly like hanging out with your friends? Maybe you need a new circle of friends. Maybe yeah, you don't really like your yeah, friends. Yeah, maybe you're not. I mean, I'm more concerned about the friend thing because you need somebody to talk to, and maybe maybe you just don't like the people that are around you. So some, I mean, it's it's normal to want to be by yourself sometimes. Oh yeah, I, 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 I fully like, I agree. I was about myself. to add in on that. Like sometimes I do like being by myself, but it's not like I shut out my friends for it. It's just you know I make plans for myself. If you got to, you have to. Um, Why do you feel that is, a, is a normal part of the? It human is. Life? It's completely normal. Now so my opinions are different in revol in like in revolving about the people you like, because. When I like someone and someone likes me back, I get sucked in. Like, I, I get, like, fallen into that, that, uh... Trap. The yeah. The booby trap. <laughs> if you can say trap, yes. Um, and, and we grow from then, and I ended up being, end up being in relationships with them. Um, and then it, it's, it's different. Like, yeah, like, I, for, also for people that I like, and they don't like me back... I'm also sucked into that, like hoping to for the fact that they like me back, and it never comes. <laughs> so. That one happened to me. But if right, mm, okay, I guess. Even, right. even when she doesn't like, <clears throat> if I don't like her, it's an entirely different thing. But when I like someone, I'm I'm generally speaking in all, all all the way. Even when they don't like me back, I stick around for quite a while. Yeah, you hold on to something. Yeah, like that. I hold on to it because I'm hoping that eventually they'll see that we can make it work. 
and whether or not this will relate to you in a way um, because you're saying once they like you back it's not going to be like you don't feel the same way maybe it's because you built so much up uh, about um, their side like mm-hmm. so just be careful with that because like you're you're only gonna like for me in my past in, uh, instances like you're only gonna break your heart in a sense uh because you put an image of them that that's not who they truly are and then, like you got to give them the benefit of that like you're putting so much high hopes into something that they're not gonna achieve and then i don't think they sorry there's nothing wrong with being alone either. I, I don't think that they, they, she meant it um, to the point that it was like she's been with somebody for so long and that they have. I think they meant it as in like, oh, I like this person and the person's like, I like you back. And she's like, nah. Yeah, that's what I got from it. Yeah. And <clears throat> which I can yeah, totally relate. I relate to I this do 100%. That all the time. I relate to this 100% as well. Yeah, but there's a difference between. Th- I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's I, hard I to explain it to she, somebody I don't think she would enter a relationship without feelings if she well, can't she or he we don't know we don't know or she or he I'm thinking sorry. this I don't know why I think this is a she sorry I think it's a she too um but because girl guys don't I feel like guys don't really think like this um she, I, I say this be, I don't think it's a long term just because she can't she can't she doesn't have friends so how is she gonna build a relationship if she can't even build a friendship so that's why I, I'm, I, I don't, and I, honestly, I don't think that she means that she doesn't have any friends. I think she does have friends. I think she shies away from them at times. She spends a lot of periods of time that she doesn't talk to them. And I know this because I have friends that do this to me and it's, and they are going through their own personal things and she's probably, or he's probably going through their own personal things. And the only solution they see is that they retreat within themselves and they don't want to talk to anybody. And then she, or he or she sees it as a problem within themselves and they take everything in, and they hold everything then that means in. That they internalize. But at what exactly. point do you become disinterested? Like when um, they admit to you, like when you start talking like more closely, and they flat out admit they like you, or when you start things start getting more serious, and they're maybe they start talking about sexual stuff. Like maybe there's that too, where you're not comfortable with your sexuality, and maybe you're almost intimidated by it. That could be it too. I think. Personally, I relate to this, so, but I can tell you, um, as advice, I would say just, you know, as soon as you end up not liking somebody because they tell you that they like you, you I say push past that and give that person a shot because you're going to continually be disinterested in everybody. That's what happened. That's what I did. You never know. That person could be a really good friend. Right. And having friends. You can never have too many friends. Friends are awesome. You know, they can be close, they can not be close, but, you know, there's always, there's different friends from for each moment of your life. Like, there's some friends that, that are for specific ages. There's there's friends that I had only in high school, and there's friends that I only had, like, in my early 20s, and um, they were meant to be only in that part of your life. Like, people come and go into your life for a reason, and maybe that's what's going on. Maybe you're going through a change, and... The, this is the change that's going on right now but try not to see it as a negative thing try to try to work on yourself try to see something positive but this is it. affecting her emotionally somehow because she maybe feels like it's preventing her from being in relationships i think that's why she went out for advice she knows something is up like it's not a normal thing I don't know. Maybe she feels uncomfortable with it. She wants to change it. What Ellie said to push, push through, through it and thing. like you know give give that person a shot for once. What what's the worst that can happen? You know, right? I think that's something that you should do. You should just not immediately dismiss the person, cut them out of your life, even though you're completely disgusted by them because apparently you are, or apathetic to it. Like push past that, and maybe something good will but come. But what if it. it's past the point of that? Then that's a different situation. She's just I asking us what that, to do now with I somebody think that, that she has a crush with. She's not past that because she's still. Or whoever's the, sending this, it could be she, man or woman. She or he is still at the point that they're reaching out for advice, help, whatever it is. Just, they're still looking on to the outside, so they're not that far. And it's and so. it's not weird. What you're going through is not weird. It's very yeah, normal. I don't think it's weird. 
Um, Maybe it's also, I mean, so the way that I try to see it when I, when I like somebody and then I, and like, I, it's not even that they, I, they tell me that they like me. It's that I have a feeling that they start liking me because of the little hints that, that the opposite sex for me, or if it's the same sex, um, drops, um, it's that I, I, I try to tell myself, maybe it's my gut telling me that, um, that I was supposed to avoid that person. Um, I don't know, I, I don't necessarily get disgusted, but the second I know that a person is as interested in, in me, and I find something I don't like about them, I kind of latch on and I'm like, this is why I'm not going to like you. I know I'm not going to like you. I'm going to keep talking to you for a little while. But I know I'm not gonna but like you. But at the same time, you them. have the power in that situation. Like this person, that's true. That's, that's good. I, no, I'm not saying it's the same thing. But I know that I I do something similar to that, mm-hmm. and it's it's not healthy. But that's good. No, but, but, the that, but then, but yeah, but you're trying and you're pushing past something. So I think that that's what this person should be doing. But pushing past it isn't necessarily a solution to the issue. It's not, but it gives. I'm, I'm saying not push past. Like, I'm saying. How to ex- It's not a solution, this. but it's an alternative. It's an alternative to help see if that works. Like, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I'm immediately revolted by this person that I'm talking to, even though I thought I liked them, but I don't. But I'm going to try to push past it to see if I, I can and find think, something yeah. redeeming in there. Because maybe... Yeah, think about why you like tempor- them. Yeah, exactly. This could be something temporary, like some sort of feeling. If you go past to what the state you are now... You might find that you, you have a different... You get more information, yeah. at least, that you can yeah. juggle wrong with. Because, so, like... What you have now is just like, oh, he likes me? Fuck. I mean, you know, whatever. Ew. 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 Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that's oh. that's what I I, I, I I think we all suggest that is to just move past to the next level and see what, what happens after that and then get back to us with that question. Um, The next question is, I don't want to lose my best friend. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a long post. I'm, ex- I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm a mess and I fuck something up. So I became close with my coworker. She doesn't get she doesn't really get close to guys to talk to them. And I'm the only one she ever got close with. She even followed me on Instagram and Snapchat again. Okay? Uh, I became very close and we're best friends. Uh, okay. It's really long, sorry. Uh, she's my favorite friend. <laughs> This guy sounds like an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Okay, babe. Sam, uh, her parents are strict and they think that girls shouldn't be friends with guys. So one day I texted her uh, saying oh, she's pretty and she is and I was being honest. So her sister went through her messages and saw that I texted her and thought we were dating Then told her mom and her and she got in trouble. Her mom even told her not to go to work. Uh, she explained everything to me on text, and she said she needed a break. I was okay. I said okay, and that I should listen to her, and that she should listen to her mom, even though I didn't want her to. We didn't talk for two days, and then she texted. <laughs> Sorry, Savannah burped really loudly in the <laughs> corner. Uh, then she texted saying she can't stop. Uh, talking to me. <laughs> Long for no reason. <clears throat> uh, so let me skip down a few. Uh, the next, she, uh, sh- I kept on, okay, uh, okay, where were to prefer, I can't skip it. <laughs> we were talking every day and we were so close, it was really hard for both of us. Then everything was back to normal, but me, the stupidest dumbass for fun, for me being, I guess being, the stupidest dumbass for fun wanted to prank her, saying, "I'm going to Paris for two weeks." Next day, I show up to work, and she and she was so mad and didn't talk to me. She even told the manager that she doesn't want to work afternoons anymore. Uh, I kept on apologizing, but she said she was mad, and she said how I lost her trust. So the next day, I apologize so many times. Okay, before I continue, how old are you? Because this you don't say how old you are in this email at all. And it sounds like you're probably, like, in your teens still. Age okay, I'm does gonna, make a difference. I'm going to go ahead sure. and say exactly. this is a teen. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't even hear anymore. Yeah. So this has happened when I was working in this summer job. Uh, This guy from, like, I don't know, Venezuela or something. Or like Lima, Peru or something. 
He, uh, he, we're working at this fucking phone bank for, it was like a political shit. And then I'm the type of person who is pretty nice to everyone. So he would sit next to me and he thought I liked him, but I was just friends with him. And he would like bring me chocolates at, after work and stuff. And he'd be like, do you want to go eat this but just us? And it's I so said, cute. <laughs> and my, like, I was like, no, like, I, I don't see you like that. I'm sorry. Like, I have to go. And um, it was just getting weird. And I actually told the boss because I, I was like, you know what? This makes me uncomfortable. Because he's, like, following me to my car and shit. Oh, how so old are you at this point? I was, um, I was, like, 17. Okay. So, actually, what am I talking about? I was, like, 19. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I was 19. And, um, yeah, so he was just doing this stuff to me. And I had, to I had to tell he was a little bit older, in his mid-20s or something. But I was just, it was just me being nice to him. And he took it, you know, a different way. I tried to be nice about him, telling him I wasn't interested. But, you know, he, he did it. And he completely stopped talking to me after my boss told him something. And that's how it ended. Like, I think you need to back off, brah. I think she doesn't watch you. I think you need to back off. That's what I think. But. I think you like her. And. She's uncomfortable, so back off, bra. Uh, yeah, because apparently she ignored him, and then she replied one day with, do you think you're the only one that's good at pranking? And that she was going to take revenge for what I, he had done. Uh, first of all, dude, you didn't do anything wrong. What? Yeah, what he, did. he was being weird, and he, like, lied to her and shit. Yeah, but that's not like, oh, I'm going away to Paris, do we? But he was fucking being creepy. She was probably being just as creepy, but, like, he was being creepy, too, like... You're pretty. That's already saying I like you. That's it. Like you've crossed your boundaries. Mm. You've crossed your boundaries. With yes. a coworker? With a coworker? Who's mm. supposed to be your friend? Me, I, you're saying I you're pretty, so you're crossing your boundaries. That I can't call you pretty. You want more? You're, no, 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 Christina. Because we are like we are friends. We're not coworkers. We have to work with each other. No, yeah, it's it's a difference in the mm. workplace. I agree. There's, but it depends on the circumstance. So if she ever opened up herself to be more on a friend's boundary in the workplace, then it leads out to, hey, I think you look good today, or I think you look pretty. And then that response is what defines where you're at. There's also, there's also context in all of this. Yeah. We don't know context, so... They could have very easily become friends outside of the workplace that just happened to work together. Or they could have become or they could have become friends inside wherever the hell they work. They're as co workers and not like gone for drinks or whatever. The second it's outside of it, it's within a different context. So someone saying, You're pretty is already I'm not saying it's okay, but what I'm saying is that it's already within a different context and it sends mixed signals he's also saying I, w I was reading it over while you guys were talking he's also saying that he was messaging her while she was at like a family event consistently and she was ignoring him and then he finally no. was like okay, okay no. well i'm gonna be out of your life then if you don't want to talk to me that's no. you're going that's, on that's real strong dude you're yeah, going on real strong. Yeah, you're too hot. Yeah, you're coming. That's, you're that's coming. manipulation and that's... Um, yeah, you're manipulating her. Exactly. You're manipulating her a little bit. She's obviously doing something. If somebody doesn't message you, you don't immediately continue to message them completely. That would completely keep me away from you. I'd be like, get the fuck out, out of here. And that sends a, a crazy signal. Yeah. It definitely that's does. Already, that's already yeah. And I'm going to tell you from a guy's standpoint, you're going too fast. Like, way too fast. Like, it's it's... If you're trying to give off that approach that you care about her, especially like, hey, how's this thing going? I heard, you, like, because she probably talked to you about it before and whatnot. Just, just yeah, be like, you could you could wait till she gets back at work. And the next time you meet at work, that's something, that's a conversation topic. You just bring it up lightly. And, like, how did it go? And that's, this and that. You don't message her on that particular time and if she doesn't respond because obviously she has her like she's busy with something because she is in something like an event that that you are aware of you don't push that and then you don't threaten 
your your friendship over that. That's, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, and she's also he's also saying that her grandpa has liver cancer and is at the hospital, and that he texts her and she ignores him. Of course, she's dealing with life, dude. I th- yeah. I think you need to calm down a little bit, reevaluate. Like before you send like a, a barrage of text messages to this person, you should actually take a breath. Yeah. And think about it. Like if I was in this situation, would I like that? You're 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 coming on too hot, dude. You're coming on a little too strong. This person clearly isn't comfortable, and just leave them alone. Let them deal, and just let them know that you're there for them if they need you. But just just leave them alone and focus on yourself a little bit and think about what you've done because Especi- you're a little you're a little a little crazy there. Right. And Especi- I don't like calling people crazy, but if you were doing that to me, I would immediately blacklist you from everything. But does he does he state that she's uncomfortable? It sounds like it. She just goes, know, I'm I okay. Agree. I agree that she And then she ignores him. Right. But if she's ignoring you, that's that's clearly a sign that we, she's uncomfortable with what's Right. Happening. And we also don't know their relationship. True. So maybe they are very close, but he's just, I'm, I'm going to say it, it's just overreacting for these things and then come off as very pushy for this matter. And which I tell you from a guy perspective, you need to retain. Now, um, the fact that you're in the level that she's open enough to tell you about like the situation with her personal life is good in the sense that you guys are close. You should not, again, be pushy or threaten for the matter. Definitely not. No. Yeah. Especially for something that is just a, a traumatic event. As, as what she's going through. so That just makes it more traumatic. Yeah. And it doesn't, makes her not want to talk to you. Right. You're, putting, you're adding more to her... You're being clingy. Clingy, but you're adding more stress. Because it's like yeah. she's putting... She's already dealing with one thing. And then you're purposely making her feel bad for not responding to you in a way. So that is not good. What you need to... It's also unhealthy. It is unhealthy. It's, it, it breaks up to an unhealthy relationship. And that's what we see a lot in modern day. This isn't something that, that's unique. This is something that happens all around. Um, just take a breath, man. Like, you have your life to think about. You have your job to worry about and all that. Just build on yourself. Be happy. And... Be available whenever this person needs you. Uh, so I guess uh, thank you everybody that sent in your questions. And if we got it from Reddit, thank you for letting us read it, I guess. Uh, or I just pretty much read it. I'm sorry. I didn't use your names or anything, so nobody knows. <laughs> you, you what, Ellie? What? Did you read it? Oh, God. All right. So I think that ends this podcast, guys. Uh, thank you all for listening. Um, if you want to send in advice, please go ahead and email us at asktastefully at gmail.com. If you want to ask us questions on Twitter that are a lot shorter, uh, just use the hashtag AskTastefully and uh, follow us on all of our social medias. So... Bye! Oh. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh my god! Okay, so bye guys! Bye! bye. bye.